preserve, protect, and defend. Support and defend the Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies, foreign and domestic. So help me God. So help me God. State sanctioned kidnapping is when a state agency unlawfully removes a child or senior from a family's care by illegally editing court hearing tapes or manipulating the court files. Victims of state sanctioned child abductions. It's difficult to believe how easily and quickly children are removed from their parents without any show of wrongdoing. This amounts to nothing more than a state sanctioned kidnapping. Dockets are doctored. The transcripts had been altered. Fabricated medical evidence. Tapes edited. The altering of trial audio tapes. The audio tapes were criminally edited. Transcript tapes were edited. Judges fixing transcripts. Victims of false allegations of abuse. Evidence of police wrongdoing, of edited tapes, of manufactured evidence. The evidence is being manufactured. Father proves courts edit tapes to remove the evidence that that goes against the judge's ruling. Okay. They know what they're doing. And for them to pretend that they don't know that the records are being altered, these are not stupid people. This is not just overzealous officials claiming to err on the side of caution for uh, children's welfare. They, this is a systematic confiscation of children from their parents. The desire to protect children, of course, is a noble desire. However, what, has turn, what this has turned into is an industry. The stories you've seen here may seem fantastic. In fact, they are very common and almost routine. There's no penalty for government lawyers who incite their witnesses to commit perjury. There's absolute immunity for prosecutors that, that could make conduct illegal and prosecute with the full force of government to, to, to create crimes. A, set, a new set of crimes. It creates civil orders without rights, without your rights because you weren't there. We often have what's called an ex parte hearing. That means one where only one side goes in and the other side doesn't get any notice, has no idea that there's a hearing going on, and doesn't even show up because they don't know what's happening. And the incestuous nature sort of, of how the courts and the custody evaluators and the party that's being favored by those professionals in the court system kind of collaborate together. Children, but in some cases the elderly, are effectively confiscated by uh, court officials. Their estates are plundered. I was put on trial by federal court. I was sentenced to six months in jail. And I faced a relentless series of charges. Just two words, federal money. So the incentive is not to keep the child in the home. What you have now in this country is a situation where the judiciary and the, and the bar are working together to run a criminal racketeering enterprise that is extorting money from people under color of office. The courts are a criminal enterprise to get money, federal dollars, from the federal government. The entire justice system has basically collapsed. Is this a racketeering scheme? It certainly is. It's racketeering, it's extortion, there's a whole bunch of crimes that are going on. And you have, you have judges that are accountable to no one. We're standing in front of the Billerica House of Correction where I was wrongly incarcerated for most of the five and a half months until my mother was able to remortgage the house to come up with the $50,000 cash bail that was required. Uh, if you don't pay us this $150 per hour for the next five years, uh, we're going to take the kid away from you. That's, that's a little bit more of, a, of an extortionistic demand because that results in money going directly into the pockets of the private individuals and agencies, private individuals and agencies who are uh, benefiting from this public process and using their authority as governmental agents to, to extort money out of, out of a parent. I not only discovered that the courts edited hearing tapes, but I discovered the motivation behind they're doing these criminal acts, and that is massive federal funding. The entire judicial system is corrupt. They lost for gold. Your vote is sold. Take back the soul of our nation. What they do is they offer the state a bribe or a federal incentive to be involved and conduct themselves in such a manner. 
Well, does it create statistics? Is it meant? I don't know that it's meant to create statistics, but it creates cases. And if cases create the grants, then so be it. For every child who is removed from the family home, there are 25 service providers who derive their livelihood from that child's removal. They have a vested interest in maintaining their income. They have a vested interest in maintaining their practice. Child abuse by public officials. The worst abuse I've experienced is at the hands of the government, and the worst abuse my, my child has experienced is at the hands of the government. That's the only abuse that's going on here. Uh, just to get the word out to the public, I filed a lawsuit against the state bar for racketeering. I reported case fixing, criminal activity in a court, and I have done 231 days in jail for basically reporting crimes. And uh, the consequence was that in secret uh, tribunals, I lost my law license. They took it away, and they would not give me a public trial of the matter. I had my license to practice law uh, suspended without a hearing. All total, I was arrested 26 times and prosecuted, literally thrown in jail and prosecuted. I'm attorney Eugene Rona, a Pennsylvania attorney who is in the process of being disbarred by the Supreme Court of Pennsylvania because I accused the courts of criminal misconduct for the alteration of court proceeding. These courts operate in secrecy, they are accountable to virtually no one. They leave, usually leave no record at all of their proceedings. I had to be silenced through uh, serious dis discrediting. In other words, discredit me, you know, this former Girl Scout in every sense of the word, by making me a criminal. They wanted to do anything to see that I didn't win cases. Lawyers who merely reported that their clients' tapes were illegally edited Boom, they're gone. Yeah. They're terrorized, they're beaten, they're thrown in jail. If I've been beaten, I've been thrown in jail unlawfully. I've been fined $20,000 unlawfully. And I've witnessed other political activists like myself who want to expose this being thrown in jail unlawfully. And then finally, uh, doing everything you could to psychologically destroy me so that I couldn't assist other people and extract what funds I have so that I couldn't defend myself. June Maxim, the other speakers, and I are being victimized by domestic terrorists. Domestic enemies of the Constitution who use terror tactics to destroy and suppress all who oppose them. They're not going to report on it. Kevin Thompson, uh, whose book on uh, judicial corruption in Massachusetts has been banned. Uh, and this federal funding is having a terribly corruptive effect on uh, journalists, on academics, on prosecutors, on court officials of all kinds. I found out that every time I exposed public corruption or white collar crime, the people who I exposed face no charges, and I faced a relentless series of charges. The, the uh, press is biased. Uh, and, and, and your story does not come out. The true story does not come out. Our boys are fighting to bring freedom and justice in foreign lands while here at home it is being stripped from us. Right. It's a trick played on all of us. Why would courts and judges do this sort of a thing? The answer to that question is just two words. Federal money. And they just simply created this this statute created this, uh, created all these committees, created these jobs, created these industries, and no one's going to stop them because there's no one to stop them. So there is an industry completely built up around the redistribution of our children. Who gets the checks for the services that are offered? It's not the parents and it's not the child, it's the service providers. I'm here in Washington, D.C. today to ask the federal government why federal funds are available to the legal industry to prey on society's weakest members, our elderly, our handicapped, our mentally challenged, and our children. This court system is riddled with abuses, with corruption, with graft. Children are effectively 
walking bundles of cash. Whoever controls the children uh, can get money from the federal government. The legislature, the judiciary, the legal system lusts after these federal funds. The federal government is the locomotive driving this whole thing. They're taking uh, otherwise uh, normal courts and they're adding fuel in the form of federal money to subsidize certain actions that they want to see happen. They ended up uh, creating an industry. <laughs> an industry. People getting arrested without a hearing and things of that nature and all having to do with the change in the law. Judges gave themselves immunity for their decisions as long as those decisions were not malicious or corrupt. A few years later, the court took the malicious and corrupt away. Judges have given themselves immunity. Are you aware of that? I, I read that about... A absolute yeah, immunity. Yeah. They've given lawyers qualified immunity. Mm -hmm. And in my case, Margaret Marshall used my case to rewrite the anti slap law to give social workers who commit perjury in court immunity. And the immunity, which are totally un-American, we're all supposed to be equal before the law, but they've made themselves into an aristocracy that operates above the law. Mm -hmm. The judges had created immunity. They had created such a thing called sovereign immunity, and I'd look at the Constitution and I'd say, how can you come up with this thing called sovereign immunity where the government is not accountable to the people? How can that happen? There's not a word of it in the Constitution. In fact, the whole idea of the Constitution is the government should be accountable to the people. How does judicial immunity jive with the concept, the constitutional concept, that all men are equal before the law? And if you want to continue to have a relationship with your child, you do as we say, or we'll take your child away. The harm that they do to the children of our nation, that's incredible. There's, you're talking tens of thousands of children being harmed by these judges' actions just so they can collect money from Washington. When they interfere with the family unit, undermine parental authority, and substitute state decisions for parent decisions, that is going to be the beginning of the destruction of our society. Is it a big leap to consider that these people who are doing unconstitutional and illegal acts to empower themselves and industries, the legal industries that they belong to, is it a big stretch to really uh, think that they would go so far as to edit tapes? I guess not. How can you have a government and all of its little governors being immune at the same time have a right to petition government for redress? We'll be handing out some flyers trying to raise some awareness and bring some exposure to the sedition and treason that takes place daily in our courtrooms. Isn't there anybody with a conscience in our judicial system or our government? Well, the more I asked, the more I saw that it was somehow buried in the field of law and the, the people that govern, the, their inability to control the government. Thomas Jefferson warned us all that the biggest danger to America isn't from abroad, it's from within and it's from the judiciary. Mm -hmm. He, a lawyer, points out that the judiciary is the greatest threat to our democracy. Oh. And he's turned out to be more than correct. More than, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Come back. Come on, baby, come back. Courts are a criminal enterprise to get money, federal dollars, from the federal government.